So today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a problem I've been having with a few locomotives and that is even on clean rails and clean wheels like I have here, uh, a locomotive tends to cut out and just generally has electrical pickup problems and initially I thought you know maybe it's the wiring inside the locomotive so I went ahead and and took this locomotive apart multiple times as well as some others to figure out the problem but it wasn't even the wiring um, so anyway I'm gonna run this locomotive forward just to demonstrate how poorly it runs right now and then uh, we'll go ahead and open this up and I'll show you what I have done um, to remedy this problem like right there So right over here, the locomotive just stopped entirely, and I don't really know, you know, why it would do that. Um, so that's the problem I'm trying to demonstrate. Um, you know, I have come quite a way around the curve, and honestly, this is uh, probably the furthest distance that this locomotive has got in, you know, one in ten speed steps. Um, so that's, you know, not a great example, but I'm not going to redo it. That's just, you know, that's just the reality. So no reason this locomotive should be stopped. I'm not, you know, faking this. So anyway, after we're done with this. Uh, we'll do the exact same test and I guarantee you that will not happen. Alright, so now we have the locomotive all taken apart and I've already made the little modifications, so let's go ahead and talk about what I did. Um, first I'll say, usually when you take apart a locomotive, um, or at least what I do, is I separate the trucks from the frame and then I'm actually able to detach the pickup wires and I'll set the frame elsewhere and just work with um, the trucks and side frames. Um, for this locomotive I did not do that and the only reason is because I actually soldered the um, pickup wires to the circuit board, um, but again, usually that's not going to be a problem and I'll set the frame elsewhere so it's a little easier uh, to work with the truck side frames and the trucks themselves. But um, anyway, as you can see here, uh, I have one truck that I actually took the side frames off of. This one I left together just because um, it's less of a hassle to take the side frames off, um, but with them off it's kind of easier to explain the parts and what I did. So anyway, we're looking here at a truck side frame. This is the inside of it uh, here. So you can see this is copper contact pad and there are three little holes there and that is where the axle points from your wheel sets thread through. So that's pretty intuitive. Um, you can also see there right around that axle point there's a little circle disc there that is sort of like a, a wheel face and that's going to make contact uh, with our copper pad here. So um, what I did was using a little screwdriver um, I went from above and looking from the, the top here, typically that copper uh, contact pad is going to be flush and straight with the side frame there. But with that screwdriver head, I just kind of wedged it between the side frame um, and the pad. And then once it was in there, I pressed all around the rest of the contact pad. And what that's going to do is create a little bow in the pad there. And I repeated that process for um, either end of the truck as well, so that there's kind of a a little flare above or at each of the axle points. So I repeated that for this side frame as well and the process is exactly the same for the truck that is still together. Um, you know the only difference being the side frames are still attached so I just wedged uh, the little screwdriver between the contact pad and the side frame there and just kinda move the screwdriver from side to side and that's just gonna kinda um, bend that copper pad just a little bit. So you can see looking from above here there's just a little warp in it and what that's going to do is just put a little more pressure on the axle points and the wheel face and that'll uh, improve electrical conductivity. Um, you don't want to put too much curve in it because um, that's going to put a lot of pressure on those wheel sets. You can see there's actually quite a bit of play in these uh, these wheels here and um, we don't want the truck to become too rigid because then the, the locomotive will have a tendency to derail. Uh, the final thing that I did, and this is going to help you know, in every locomotive and no matter the situation, is you just you, know, you want to clean things off. So I have this cool little spiral brush here and some rubbing alcohol. So I just dipped the brush in some alcohol 
and I wiped off the copper contact pads there. I made sure that the wheel faces were clean and everything, and I did the same thing for this truck as well. Again, the only difference being that the side frames aren't off, so I just kind of, just like the screwdriver, I just wedged the brush and uh, between the wheel face and the side frame and just kind of swirled it around. So now that everything is cleaned off and the, those contact pads are modified, we're going to go ahead and put everything back together. I'll take the locomotive down to the layout and hopefully everything will uh, run better now. So already the locomotive's gone well past where it stopped last time and hasn't had any hesitations at all. So. I can't say for sure if uh, the, you know, the work I did made any difference, but it definitely seems like it did, and at least on the other locomotive I did this with, um, it made a huge difference. So, I don't know, if you guys are interested in trying something like that, go ahead. Honestly, it's probably more cleaning the gears that did, uh, you know, that made the big difference. So, anyway, that's the video for today. Hopefully that was helpful in some way, and stay tuned for more videos soon.